Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. This is Dominic Sicali, Mafia Roundtable. I'd like to thank our sponsor, EG Vodka. Go to egvodka.com to order your vodka. It'll be drop shipped to you. Get a premium vodka and average price. EG Vodka, 100% organic, excellent taste in vodka. Try it, you'll like it, just like Mikey. Give it to Mikey, he'll try it, you'll like it. Uh, that's for the old heads like myself. You'll know what I'm talking about. Also, we have Champagne de Rock. You'll be able to order it. We have four flavors. Excellent champagne out of France. Wonderful. With that, go to egvodka.com. Go to our website, which is up and running now. You'll be able to order it from our website as well. This story today has to do with the assistant chief of police in the Bronx, Edward Delator. Edward Delator lived on Scherz Avenue, where you have in the Bronx the Marina del Rey, which is a well-known establishment for parties, engagements, weddings, etc., off of the Long Island Sound. I lived in on Scherz Avenue. Vinny lived on Scherz Avenue, right, right by the Marina del Rey. And where I lived, it was on the Long Island Sound. that had a private beach. It was Vinny's mother-in-law's home. I had an apartment there. Vinny's son also had the upstairs apartment. And then a few houses down, there was, these are row houses. Actually, not row houses. Two of them connected. There's maybe about 10 of them all together. <clears throat> Edward Delator had one. He lived on the corn on the end. So he was the acting chief of police in the Bronx. When I got arrested, I was living on Robinson Avenue. I had bought an old home, tore it down. It was a double-sized lot. And then I bought the house. I paid cash for the house next door to me, which was abandoned. The fire department used to go there and ask me if it was okay. They would do a training at that house. I said, sure, it was abandoned. I didn't care. It was a teardown. But before I got arrested, I moved everything into the architect's name, Alan Bolton, Turned out to be a real scumbag piece of shit. And I have stories with him too at his bachelor party just to... Matter of fact, we'll talk about his bachelor party and I'll go into the story. At his bachelor party, we're all hanging out there. It's myself, uh, people from Kava Construction, which dear, dear friends of mine, uh, childhood friend actually. And there's building inspectors, there's other construction guys, money guys, a big, big group of guys. We used to get together every Thursday night and talk construction, talk what projects are going on and help one another. Great, great network of guys. And there'd be anywhere from 15 to 24 of us at any given time. Sometimes we have three or four inspectors that would come inspect the job site. So you know, we keep them close so we would never have any issues on our job sites while we're building the homes. So at Alan's party, all of a sudden, it's in a restaurant, the downstairs part of the restaurant. They had a nice, like, lounge area for private parties where people would go. And all of a sudden, two strippers come in. I mean, they had to be the raunchiest strippers I ever saw in my life, like, Oh, you looked at them like, what the hell? It looked like they were smoking crack that they just came in off the corner. Friend Peter and I, we look at each other like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Like, don't even come on, come by me. Stay away. Like, something might jump off of you, a flea or something, a tick. Like, stay where you're at. And we were laughing. All of a sudden, Alan's there. This is the architect, the scumbag that I call. And you'll know why into the story. And the girls are around him and they're dancing. They're naked, no clothes on. And we're egging him on. There's, everybody's just feeling good. Alan's really ripping and roaring with the liquor in him. All of a sudden, she opens up her leg. She's on the floor. He goes there and he starts going down on this girl with his mouth. I'm like, oh my God. The place goes into an uproar. And this idiot still like, he's down and he has his head between her legs. I'm like, oh my God. Like, oh, I just, I get the shakes even thinking about it. Uh, like, oh. But 
show you the, the mentality of this piece of shit. Oh, anyway, going back into the story. I put the properties in his name. We go to Ponce de Leon Bank, which is known for construction. Construction Bank. They knew all of us, so they would advance loans real easy. So at this time, I'm, I think there was anywhere, I want to say $2.5 or $3 million cap. I'm capped out with all my loans with them. Alan wasn't, so I had to put the property in Alan's name. It didn't matter how much equity I had in the property, how much cash. They capped out at a certain amount. So I circumvented it, and I told Alan, at the end of the day, I'll throw you $100,000. I had my home I was building, and then my home would have been four stories high, beautiful home, the way I structured everything. And then the two houses next to me, they were... Two, they were semi-attached, two, two families. So I was creating them for rental. So the basement apartment, I would have made it another apartment. So I would have had three rentals in each each place. I was giving the tenant zero access to the backyards. And on my house, which was sold, sat by itself, it was a freestanding home, no attachments. I was going to utilize the entire backyard with my pool and everything else. With that, the other, the, when I got arrested, and at the time I pulled on the loan, the loan might have been for 2.2, 2.3, I don't know the exact numbers, but there was only $900,000 taken out on construction money. The rest was out of my pocket. When I got arrested, the two rental properties we were at about 90% complete. So I have more than enough equity into it. I went out of pocket with most of the money. So I'm almost completed there. My home, they were going up with all the block work, the brick work. I didn't even have the roof on yet. These other homes were enclosed roof, windows, everything's enclosed. They're doing all the interior work. I'm... Uh, I get arrested. I'm taken off the streets right away. First four months, they have me under the SAMS Act. No communication. I don't know what the heck is going on out there. But at the end of the day, all my projects, they stopped. And by the time I was able to find out, trying to send people there, um, I mean, it was just chaotic. End results, Alan... Tried screw him. He did screw me over royally. He's trying to steal the property under his name. It's the property's in his name. Um, it got bad. It got real bad. And it got to the point like, wow. But by this time, I mean, throughout that year before I cooperated, nobody's helping me. Even Quiet Dom, I'm with him in MDC Brooklyn, which is a holding facility, federal place where they hold all pretrial inmates, people coming back on writs to fight their cases. We're together. He even looked into my body shop and everything. He said, Dom, it's a, it, he's telling me, because he's from the neighborhood, it's a fucking disgrace what they're doing to you out there. They, they raped you. They, like, it's a disgrace. And even Dom said, if Vinny comes to his building, no disrespect to you, I'm not, I'm not talking with him. He can't even talk with me. He can't sit with me. And he said, no disrespect for you, but it's just disgraceful what they're fucking doing to you. And he knew because he's in the neighborhood. And I said, tell me about it. Then I decide, I cooperate, I leave. And I'm still battling to get these properties. So now the bank's foreclosing on them. And I turn around. There was 900 at this time, might be a million two with interest and everything, whatever else Alan took out. The building, there was about, I think, 600000 taken out. Might be more. I'm, I'm really not sure of the numbers. But at the end of the day, I had my attorney. Do me a favor. Tell the bank, minus the interest, everything's in foreclosure. It's going to auction. I'll give them, altogether, say it was $2 million dollars. 
that was legitimately they owed on both properties. Told them I'll give them the $2 million without the interest, without the penalties, but I'm making them whole, basically, on the funds they laid out. And it'll resolve the issue. They turned around and said no. I found that weird. Now, all of a sudden, months go by, I find out they sold out the notes to somebody. Not even going to auction, they sold out the notes. Come to find out, they sold it pennies on the dollar. Here I'm offering them $2 million. And I find out the entity, it's called Chang Wang Realty Group. Now, remind you, my hands are tied. Um, in a protection unit, I have limited access. I'm dependent on this attorney that I have. Um, and it's just, it's ridiculous. And Chang Wang Realty Group, and come to find out, if it was a $2 million in equity that the bank did lay out, wound up buying out the notes for maybe $400,000, $500,000. And I'm like, how the fuck is that possible? A bank has a fiduciary responsibility to their investors, to their board. And yet here I'm offering to make them whole. They went and sold it out. Years later, get out of jail. And I never knew who Chang Wang Realty was. It comes out in the newspapers. Look up the article. Police chief, assistant police chief for New York, Ed Delator, with the Bonanno crime family. It was him, his wife. They had a relationship with the bank. The bank passed it over to them. And I know that bank. You duke them. You give them a few dollars. At the time, the president, the vice president of the bank, they dirty as motherfuckers. And... That's what happened. That's what I'm surmising what happened because how would it go wind up in this guy's hands? Especially when I tried to make them whole. So I get a call from internal. I'm home now, call from internal affairs. I give them a roadmap. Of course, you know, it's one of their own, so it gets swept under the carpet. But this piece of shit law enforcement guy who's fucking corrupt, obviously, stole my property with Chang Wang Realty Group. So it just shows how the system works sometimes, and uh, it's just a disgrace, really, especially for a bank to be deceitful with their board members. And to take a loss when I was making them whole, I could see if it, they let it go to foreclosure that went on the courthouse steps, but it didn't go on the courthouse steps. They sold the note out for pennies on the dollar when I was going to make them whole. So you tell me, you tell me, if the mafia did that, Oh, everybody and their mother would be on top of it. That would be a first-page story, and everybody would get a 1,000 years. This guy, a bullshit investigation. They let go, especially after they contacted me, Eternal Affairs, and they let it go. They protect their own. But that just shows, shows how sometimes how corrupt and dirty the system is, especially this Edward Delator. So remember that name. You come across him, run. Run real fast. Hope everybody likes that story. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. We have many more to come. And I'll be blowing up people left and right with other stories uh, coming out. Everybody, egvodka.com. Order your vodka. You will not be disappointed. Premium vodka at an average price. Have a wonderful evening, morning, and afternoon. Much love and respect. Peace out.